we instrumented the vehicle to study um, driver intent uh, with the goal in mind to predict it and if the intent would prove to be wrong given traffic context, be able to effect a corrective maneuver before, before anything wrong happened. The vehicle is capable of relating the 3D gaze, line of gaze of the driver onto the depth map that is perceived by the frontal stereo system. So basically this is the very first vehicle in the world that does this, uh, which uh, uh, basically estimates uh, where the absolute point of gaze uh, from the driver is in real time, 30 times per second. Uh, we have uh, four cameras looking at the environment of the, uh, around the vehicle and we have uh, a stereo system looking inside at uh, the eyes of the driver in order to compute the 3D location of the eyes and the gaze direction through the orientation of the pupil and, uh, and the iris. And so <clears throat> there's lots of data coming from that and uh, we also gather da a data stream from, from the CAN bus of the vehicle which uh, is refreshed in real time, gives us current speed, uh, steering wheel angle, and other very vital parameters on how the vehicle is being driven. And so from all this data, now what we are proceeding to do is to perform statistical analyses to figure out what comes just before maneuvers, whether they're correct or incorrect. So this is in order to build a predictive uh, module that we want to experiment with later on. We ran experiments uh, this summer in September uh, with 16 uh, test drivers, uh, all of them, each of them, uh, an hour each, uh, within the limits of the city of London, and uh, we collected a total of two terabytes of data, uh, which is which is a bit, but uh, but might not be enough. It's uh, uh, maybe counterintuitive, but uh, it's very easy to accumulate a lot of data when you collect images, and you may not have all the cases you want to study. So. Uh, after we uh, uh, finish our first pass on, uh, on uh, the data with the statistical analysis, we'll be able to tell if we have enough data or not. We've been able to uh, replicate uh, results that have been uh, obtained and published in Nature back in the 90s, but uh, with a very different type of instrumentation and not using uh, live vehicles but simulators, that the gaze of the driver uh, will always go to the tangent point while negotiating a curve. And so our data replicates that exactly. And the gaze does so 0.8 seconds before any affecting maneuvers before entering the, uh, the curve. So it's a predictive uh, glance, if you like, or gaze behavior. And our data shows, shows that very clearly. So that tells us one thing, which is very important, that our data is valid. And the other thing is that by analyzing what we have, we might find uh, things that are much more interesting than just that. Well, the next step is the building of this, uh, of this uh, maneuver prediction engine uh, and uh, its incorporation in an experimental actuated vehicle. And what we want to do is uh, for this experimental vehicle to take control when the system judges that the next maneuver will be wrong. So no warning, no, nothing of that sort. Simply reserve control, bring the car back to a stable environment and then relinquish control to the driver when he's ready to take it. I'll give you an example. You're at a stop or at a red light and uh, it, let's say it's a T inter, inter, in, uh, intersection and you want to uh, turn right on the, on the red light. So you will look left for incoming traffic and from the right there could be a pedestrian coming right in front of your car. And if you don't think about doing this before pressing the gas pedal, you're going to hurt some knees. And so it's important that if you're going to do this, that your pressing on the gas pedal would be affected by absolutely nothing. It took us three years to uh, accomplish the instrumentation, uh, debug it, test it, and then run the experiments. So to come to stage two, which is, which is uh, uh, statistical analysis and the conception of this uh, prediction engine took us three years. Now, it's hard to say, but maybe another three years. Uh, at a minimum. And what's interesting though is that uh, what we're suggesting is not autonomous driving, that's a t totally different idea. We, we are suggesting to use this in order to make a crashless vehicle that still has an operational driver in it. So that the 550 horsepower that you paid good money for you can still enjoy, not the computer.